Hi guys, I'm Guy down here in Osaka, Japan here. Very privileged to talk to Swery, who is the producer for uh, for Deadly Premonition. There's going to be a director's cut of the game, which uh, Swery is going to be releasing uh, in 2013, and I've been lucky enough to be able to talk to him about it early. So Swery, tell us what we can expect from the director's cut of Deadly Premonition. They've, uh, they've changed a lot with the director's cut. Um, the main thing is uh, they've added a couple uh, elements to the story. And uh, most importantly, uh, the controller or the controls have been changed to more of a world standard type control, using the the left stick to move around and the right stick to control the camera, and um, the right buttons to attack things like this. So um, they have added some elements to the story and changed a bit of the contents, but the main changes are mostly the controllers, which should be uh, a lot easier to use this time. Um, another thing that they've changed uh, as far as uh, the visual aspects is um, they've made it a lot more pretty, basically. Um, the original version was 720p, and they've changed it to uh, high definition. Now it's uh, 1080p, <coughs> and um, they've changed up the shading and textures, things like this. So uh, it should look a lot more uh, graphically. Uh, it's been a lot more enhanced than the last version. Um, tell us a little bit about what what going back to the project has allowed you to do in terms of. Did you want to address any of the, I guess, the criticisms that some people had with the game? I mean, it was very a divisive game, or, or is that what, what made the project special to you? Uh, um, with the original version, uh, a lot of people were really satisfied with the, uh, with the characters in the story, and um, they got a lot of really good uh, reviews about that. But um, they said there were also a lot of people who weren't fully satisfied with the graphics and the controls. And uh, they had a lot of comments. Uh, for example, you know, they wanted to be made. They want the game to be made a little bit easier to play, and they wanted to make it, I guess, uh, just visually. They wanted it enhanced. So they said they've gone back, and um, on top of adding a few story elements and changing a bit of the story, uh, they've also enhanced the graphics, the controllers. And he said he didn't mention this earlier, but they've also made it uh, 3D compatible and also compatible with uh, the PS Move. So one of the most popular discussions on, on GameSpot is around the, get, the original game's ending. Um, were you tempted to go in and change that at all in the director's cut or add to it or tweak it? Has that, has that been something you wanted to do? Uh, he's not sure exactly how much he should reveal, but um, as far as the opening and the ending both, uh, there is something that's different. So, um, since the original version was, it was completed, uh, he didn't want to kind of break that down or do anything to, to mess it up or anything. So he said um, they thought really hard about exactly what they could change without uh, destroying the original format. So he said um, they, yeah, they put a lot of thought into that and the new director's cut, he says they feel that they've really done a good job with implementing those changes they wanted to make. The, the director's cut, um, at least in, in Europe, allows you to bring the game to the PlayStation 3 for the first time as well. It was, it was on, on Xbox 360 in Europe. Is that, is that something you wanted to do with the original game? So, uh, originally they did want to make it a multi-platform game for both uh, 360 and the PS3. But um, I guess there was just a lot of things that came up and they ended up only being able to release, release it for the 360. So he said uh, this time, not just for Japan, but for North America and Europe, uh, both of the, both these regions as well, they wanted to be able to have as many people as possible play the game. And so one of the main uh, focuses this time was being able to get it on the PS3. So at GDC last year, you were asked what you might um, have liked to have add to, added to the game uh, if you had more time and resources for the project. And one, one of the answers that you gave was that you wanted the character of York to be able to ride a bicycle and work alone. Is that something that you've been able to do with the director's cut at all? Uh, what I said last year at GDC was I'd like to have York be able to ride a bicycle and take a shower and use cologne, things like this. But um, Unfortunately, in this version, uh, we weren't able to do any of those things, but one thing that may be possible is to have uh, the character of York uh, buy a house in Greenvale and live there and basically have his own residence. So that uh, may be possible in this, uh, this upcoming version. These are suggestions uh, from the GDC panel that proved very popular with, with the audience that was there watching Swery, I believe. And I mean, how does Swery feel with you know the, the reaction that the original game had? There's people out there that really love it. I mean, how do you how do you engage with those fans? Do you do you listen to to kind of their feedback and their suggestions, Swery? Um, we do get a lot of uh, comments and suggestions from fans, especially on uh, Twitter and Facebook. And the comment, that, uh, the suggestion that we've received the most was people who wanted uh, the controls to be more, uh, to match up with the world standard. And so we've decided to, well, that's why we decided to make the controls match with the world standard this time. 
And also another thing that a lot of people wanted was uh, they wanted to see more cutscenes of York. And so we had to decide how to implement these new cutscenes without uh, destroying the original format or changing too much about the original game. Uh, another comment that we've re received a lot of uh, a lot of is uh, the map is a bit hard to use, and so a lot of people wanted us to change the map. And we're actually right now kind of struggling to work that out because um, changing even just little things with the map tends to uh, kind of change a lot of other things of the game too. It can kind of break down some things. So right now they're actually having a lot of trouble trying to work that out, but they're they're doing their best to work out the map and make it easier to use for this new one. The the director's cut um, your version of the game is is really interesting from what I've read. You know, like like many directors, but in, in movies and games, you were kind of forced to do some stuff that that you perhaps were initially reticent to do. I know you said you said that originally Deadly Premonition didn't have um, uh, kind of gunplay or didn't have shooting elements in it. How do you feel in, in hindsight at being asked to introduce those and have them in the game? And do you, do you think it worked better with those elements? Um, looking back on things, uh, there were some elements that we did and didn't want to add in. But um, since it's a director's cut, it's not like a it's not a different version of the game and we wanted to keep it uh, we feel that the original game is complete as is so we wanted to keep the original game as much as possible and just add a bit onto there so as far as uh, for example shooting and uh, monsters things like this um, we're really satisfied with the job that we did and there's nothing particular that we wish we hadn't put in or anything that we wish we should have put more in and uh, we think that the director's cut is basically just uh, an improved version of what was already a complete and uh, yeah, what was already a complete game uh, when we were making the, the original version, uh, it was actually cancelled four times due to a couple things, for example, um, uh, expressions of violence and, uh, for example, the way people are killed. And so we had to take those out of the game. But this time for the director's cut, we talked to the publisher again and said that we'd like to bring these back and put them in the, in the new cut. But um, they ended up telling us, no, sorry, you can't do that. So uh, these elements, we have unfortunately had to leave out of the game. Uh, it's a bit too extreme for the game, so it turns down for that. Uh, it's great that you're bringing back Deadly Premonition in a new form, but where does this where does this leave a sequel? Can you tell us anything about that? Uh, we'd like to first get the game out to as many people as possible and have as many people play it as possible. And if we have enough people saying uh, we, we like this game, we'd like to see more of it, then um, <coughs> we'd uh, we'd have more of an opportunity and more uh, there'd be more possibility to put out, for example, a complete version or uh, a totally different sequel. And um, for the time being, mainly we want to get it out and get as many people to play it and enjoy it as possible. So um, yeah, we're satisfied with the elements that are in it now, and we'd like to see how that turns out as far as future versions go. And, and tell us about the, the development scene here in Osaka. Obviously, you've got yourselves, you've got Platinum, you've got Capcom. Tell us about what it's like being a developer in, in Osaka. From, uh, from way back in the day, I guess, uh, in Japan, <clears throat> The game industry is mainly focused, I mean, the concert here in the Kansai region, you know, Osaka, Kyoto, around there. Uh, Kyoto has Nintendo, and Osaka has Capcom, Konami, lots of companies like this. And so, um, originally I was working in SNK, and once I left there, I decided to stay in this general region because <clears throat> this is the best area to continue to develop games, uh, I guess, in the real Japanese style, and to be more specific, the real like Kansai style. So um, it's, uh, it's a really good environment for creating games, uh, for developing games, and uh, it's really comfortable as far as game developers go to be here in Osaka. As I said earlier, there were a lot of people who didn't play the original or couldn't play the original, and so there's two things that we're mainly focusing on at this point, and one of them is getting people who didn't or couldn't play the game earlier to get into the game and have them you know, enjoy it for the first time. And so we're being really careful to make sure that as many people as possible can get into the game and can enjoy it. And the other thing that we're focusing on is people who had originally played or had played the original game. Um, we don't want to, you know, break down their enjoyment of the game by changing anything too much or adding any elements that they're not going to like. So the other thing that we're being really careful with is adding to the game without breaking down the original format and making sure that people who did enjoy the original can enjoy the director's cut even further. And uh, so we're really looking forward to seeing how people how people take the game. Okay, thanks very much for your time, Swery. You can find out more about Deadly Premonition Director's Cut. Just head over to GameSpot.com.